Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday Web Feats. Um, and today you're joined by Heidi Meckler and Stuart Rosler. Good day, all. Good day. Um, and we're going to thrash out. Well, this is this is the, the topic of conversation I've been <laughs> banding about for years. But Isn't it's it bulk. <laughs> My devices are too bulky. <laughs> so, um, gosh, I don't know where to start with this. It's such a common problem, and I've got to be honest, it's a problem I've had as well um, working. For the NHS Me and too. in private practice, yeah. um, and I hate to admit this, but hey, I'm I'm going to share. Um, I think in all cases it was completely my fault. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Did you admit to that every time? <laughs> um, no, well, no, I didn't. I, you know, I remember I'd not been qualified long, and I certainly hadn't been prescribing very long. Um, and I had a patient in, and I cannot for life me remember what what the issue was, but it, I wanted a lot of control. And, you know, when you just think, oh, I'm just going to try yeah. a few things and you've been on a course and you know you had this, that and the other for increased control and curvy skies and four foot posts. And I thought I'm going to put an external four foot post on and plenty of rear foot and your know, high medial Yeah. And I'm not joking. This thing came back and it looked like a Japanese bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I saw it, I looked at the prescription. I thought, no, I can't, can't send this back because it's me. This is what I've asked for, but there's just no way. No way that was that device was ever going to fit in the patient's shoe. Mm. What kind of device was it? What uh, do you, was it? A polypropylene or it an EDA was, device? No, it's polyprop. Polyprop. Um, yeah. I've, I've made I had similar issues with with EDA devices, and again, just because I've asked for too much, or well, you get carried away, especially when you want cushioning. I'll have a bit of a layer of this and a bit of pour on, and a bit yeah, of yeah, that's true. Oh, and I'll have a top cover, and, and yeah. you know, it looks like a Bertie Bassett sweep by the time you finish. But again, yeah, right, like 1.5 <laughs> mid layer plus another 1.5 pad plus another, you know, that's point the thing. Five you think, of... oh, it's, it's only 0.5. I'll just add another one in, and yeah. A, a practitioner said to me the other day that, um, you know, when you think about what you take out of the shoe, the, the, mm -hmm. the existing liner of a shoe, you've got yes. about three mils, okay, yes. and that's three mils in total. So if we're taking out three mils and we put in forty-two, mm. <laughs> what's the patient yeah, going to say? Doesn't add up, does it? No. In fact, I remember speaking to a, a um, shoe designer and manufacturer once. Now I won't mention the name, but a very well-known brand he worked for. Um, and I was discussing orthoses and off-the-shelf devices, and he said the thing is, he said a shoe when it's designed, the heel counter is not designed to have that much bulk in the back of the heel. Mm. He said, you know, it doesn't matter how much, you, you look at the toe box, and you think, oh, you've got loads of room, I can stick another three, four mm. mils in there. He said, but once it lifts a certain amount, and I think it was, I don't think, even think it was two or three mils. Once yeah. you lift that out, then they're completely out of the heel counter, and that affects yeah, the all over the shop, Which creates a challenge in the essence mm. of what we're trying to do in, in mm. you know, orthotic therapy, yeah. is a lot of the control points that we get start with the rear foot. Mm. Yes, they do. So we've got to have a bit of mm. bit of something there to do the thing that we want it to do, and it creates all types of problems when we're talking mm. about does it fit into the shoe or this feels bulky or a whole lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Um, well, so so what's your what's your kind of key thoughts on the whole lot of bulk, Heidi? What what success uh, did you get early? I think. I mean, I'm, I suppose I'm in one of the unique positions that I've worked in all sectors. I've been five, I've been NHS, I've worked, mm. I've been on the cold, hard edge of it with, with patients, but I've also worked for commercial companies and labs. Mm. So I've mm. seen it from both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. And I know as a practitioner, it was so easy, especially when I got a bit more confident to get on the phone and what's this you've sent me. And yeah. But having worked in labs, yeah. I can say, well, actually, I think a lot of the time, they make what you ask for. Yeah. But then, but then at what point should you be picking up the phone and saying, this, this is never going to fit in a shoe? Or yeah. you realize when you ask for this, this is what you're going to get. And Oh, look, you've, you've scratched it's a... It's communication, a, isn't it? It's yeah. communication at the end of the day. That's right. You've, you've scratched a, a, a non-resolved wound there when it comes to all <laughs> of that type of stuff. <laughs> as soon as you have a look, you're a bit surprised. Can of worms is probably a better... Uh, thing mm -hmm. look from my perspective sitting in that that we talked of last week where I'm sitting in this kind of 
I know enough about manufacturing to be dangerous and, and likewise yeah. in podiatry, I can kind of communicate between the two. I can see both sides of the, of the story. Um, look, I, I think where we are in, in modern times, it's a real challenge for us as practitioners to not you know, dumb down the profession when it comes to orthotic manufacture. And I'll, I'll say that what's happening, because bulk can be such an issue, it's one of the things that can be an issue in customised design, um, because bulk is such an issue, not just for practitioners, but for the labs making it, um, like just think about you're a lab. You don't want to be sending out a device that gets sent back to you. No, you want to be sending out a device that that's, gets received well and is happy, they pay the bill and you get another one ordered. That's mm. your whole process. There's not and it's, any... and it's better for the environment too, isn't it? Exactly. And mm. that's key to us and what yeah. we're trying to do. So we've, we, we, this is a topic that we've all had a really close mm. look at and we've come up with some solutions that are um, robust in their nature and not going to be popular for all mm. practitioners, but they're going to push um, this reduction and, and not mm. have these problems to go forward. But, yeah, I, I guess on to the point of, of the profession, and where we are, the, the response has been um, in a polite way mm -hmm. to not argue with practitioners. So if I'm mm -hmm. a, if I'm a manufacturer, yeah. I, I won't necessarily argue with the person that's paying mm -hmm. my wages. No. Um, so I tend to go, well, look, I'm going to make this device fairly uniform. I'm going to be mm -hmm. very conservative in what I do. I'm kind of going to take my lead from them, but make sure it's a bit lower, a bit thinner, a bit mm -hmm. less, you know, and just feed it out. And in that sense, what we're, we're getting is a non-customised device. It's a device that's more homo homogenous in its mm -hmm. makeup. Um, and as practitioners, we accept it because we haven't got the bulk problems, okay? But the problem there is we may be doing something that's not right in, mm -hmm. our, in our role in the production of a customised device, the scanning and the positioning and the prescribing, we not, might not be doing something right and that's getting lost because what's being produced is not really what we're asking for. No, okay. but I think that can work both ends as well. And again, I put my hand up to this. I've had devices, again, mainly EVA, hmm. and I thought, you know, it's, it's far too bulky, but I haven't got time to send it back. And do I want to admit that actually it was my error in the prescription? Yeah. So the quickest thing to do if you've got a grinder, isn't it, is nip up to the That's right. lab, grind it off, but then That's right. and it fits in the shoe, but then mm -hmm. what have you ground out? You've spent That's all right. that time taking a prescription on a cast and, <laughs> and then you've shoved it under a grinder to make it fit perfectly. Exactly um, right. oh, I look, know. I went to the, in the same spot as, as I went. I, I kind of went, well, look, I'm going to leave a bit of bulk in there mm. so I can take it out. Okay, yeah. if I don't put enough in there. I can't take it out with the patient yeah. in front of me in, in, in the side. And I'm very comfortable with grinding like you are. Yeah. Um, not all of us are, are like that. And sometimes mm. we expect what comes out of the packet mm. is exactly what will fit to the patient mm. and we'll, we'll see them on the way. In a realistic sense, unfortunately, orthotic therapy isn't like that. You no. need to kind of work with what you think you need and then mm. get the device to, to create the solution that you want as a therapy but yeah look uh, look we could go on for days and yeah. years about um the, the different kind of situations i guess for for us and, and what we're looking at is what are the key things that we tend to see on a regular basis in regards to bulk and where that comes from how can we advise people to that's right those pitfalls i think and yeah. that's you come up with a very sort of comprehensive and easy yes. to follow list, haven't you? So, yeah, and we'll, we'll publish this on our various social media feeds and on the site somewhere uh, mm -hmm. in time. I guess it's, it's worth acknowledging that this has come from um, proprietary information. So businesses that I've been uh, had myself, so my businesses, um, I've always kept track of the errors and where the errors have come from. Yeah. So I prescribe something. I, I kind of go through the process of getting it manufactured. Mm -hmm. I then dispense it to the practitioner, uh, to the patient. I then go and review with that patient you know, mm -hmm. in two weeks, four weeks, six, uh, three months, six months, 12 months. I'm constantly talking to my patients, getting them to come back in, making little adjustments, but recording it yeah. and recording it in a very Stuart way of you know <laughs> computer and spreadsheet. But what I was able to do is see the patterns that I was doing. 
okay, in a very systemized way, a very statistical way. So over the years, I started to do this in, in, in a bigger scope of, of different um, consortiums, not just in podiatry, but in, in kind of uh, the corporate world. I looked at the patterns of where these things were coming from. Mm -hmm. And what we can see, it's about 85% of the problems sitting about the top two list of a, of a list of 10. It's about mm -hmm. the top two that explain 85% of why we're getting bulk. Mm -hmm. What's really not nice for us as practitioners is those two things, those two variables, are practitioner based. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. we're going to say that. Yeah, and and you know, in in a, in essence, you are what you scan. Yeah. Okay. So and I have to say, I'm going to interrupt you there a minute. When I learned how to do plaster of Paris casts, and we had Ray Anthony came and taught us, and it was a, I had to properly study for that, and then I mm. then we got tested, and it was all day, and it was complicated, and I was glad I had a bit of maths background. Mm. Whereas now, it's there's so many different ways of casting, oh, yeah. and it, or not casting rather, but scan, of taking a foot impression. Yeah, modelling, it's called modeling. in the design sense. Yeah, a number of people have said, "Oh no, I can't cast," and these are people that are quite high up. Mm. Um, biomechanically so and they say oh no we don't but i can't do plaster powers so i just stick it in a foot, foot impression box you don't yeah. stick it in a foot impression box do you no. uh, there's a whole protocol around every technique that mm. you use to capture the foot and i yeah. think the the essence that i always try and think of when i'm doing mm. these procedures mm. is that what method am i capturing the foot yeah. in what how am i going to model this foot so someone else can use it to then create a device and what are the problems with that method so I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I like scanning, so scanning's the best. I like plaster you know, Paris. Plaster. For another Wednesday, isn't it? That That's one? right. Yeah. Horses for courses when it comes mm -hmm. to that. But what is important is knowing mm -hmm. that that's one part in a big process of producing yeah. an orthotic mm -hmm. and a very essential one. But mm -hmm. if we um, capture in a, in a certain mm -hmm. way and we capture a certain feature, we need to mm -hmm. look at it as, a, it as practitioners and say, mm -hmm. have I captured what I see in this person? Yeah. And does it relate to what I want to do with that person in an orthotic mm. therapy sense? So, mm. you know, the, the classic for me is your, your foam box uh, mm. casting method. One high kind of cautionary tale that I'll look at there is your four foot plantar grade. Yeah. Okay. Mm. In, in essence, you, mm. when you put the patient's foot in, in the box and settle them down in to get the, the semi-weight bearing cast, mm -hmm. innately what the patient will do is plantar flex their, their forefoot, mm -hmm. okay? And if you think simply of what that does to the shape of a device, mm -hmm. you've automatically created a higher curve mm -hmm. in the medial and lateral arch, okay? Bulk, a more bulk, bulk. Exact, yeah. yep, more abrupt curve, mm -hmm. and there's the bulk. So yeah. then when we get on the blower back to the practitioner after I've got this device in my hand and say, this thing's too bulky, and I'm talking to my lab, you've made it too bulky, I need to acknowledge that it started its life when I captured that scan, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in regards to a, a manufacturing sense, they're not allowed to change things that we do because we're the medical professional. Mm -hmm. They must follow instructions. Otherwise, we're in a world of litigation and hurt, essentially. Mm -hmm. So... When it, it comes to a manufacturing sense, they will create what you've mm. provided them. And to some extent, we can expect them to think, well, is, is this really the device you want? Because that won't fit into any shoe that I can think of. But the, the major ones aren't necessarily the problem. It's the little mm. nuances of what's going mm. on. Uh, we had a situation the, the other day where we... Um, we did the sums of, of the rear foot to forefoot alignment, okay? In a basic sense, we, we had a captured foot model where the, uh, we, we wanted to adjust the rear foot to zero, so we did, and we had to adjust that by two degrees. The forefoot was recorded at six degrees, okay? So at six degrees at the forefoot, we then adjusted that there, but for whatever reason, it was actually an eight-degree forefoot difference between the rear foot and the forefoot. Okay, so if we do the sums of the maths there, we yeah. ended up with a two degree four foot inversion. Okay, mm -hmm. a, a pad that went all the way through to the, the, the toes of the foot. Now, in one sense, the lab wasn't instructed to, to bring the forefoot to the ground, mm -hmm. make it flat at the front. Mm -hmm. And so 
they weren't allowed to change the device because they weren't expressly told. But in another sense, mm -hmm. it didn't look like a common device. It had a big bulky forefoot mm -hmm. and it probably wouldn't have fitted in to the shoe, that a common shoe, let's say. It could have fitted into a shoe, but it depends on the dim dimensions of the foot, of course. But it wouldn't fit into a shoe normally, but it was a line ball call on whether it would or wouldn't. That's a grey area because you don't know that that's not part of somebody with orthopaedic shoes. And that's right. That's what they exactly want. Exactly right. Really and play. it might be, I know in my situation, I've got quite a, a, a high taller angle, but I've got a very narrow foot. Mm. Okay. So I've got a, a foot that's it's typically male in a sense of, of that high inclination angle that comes yeah. in. But because the foot's so narrow, mm. the, the shoe and the bulk of the shoe, my, my last comes all the way together. Okay, so when my shoes get old, I've got nothing to pull the lace together with, so the foot right. flops around in the shoe, but it's the right length. Okay, yeah, so we're okay. talking volume there now. Um, when I put an orthotic in, I make sure, because I can design it for some mm. reason, not very well, I will say. <laughs> I'll probably get you to design it, Heidi, that might be better. But I can design a bit of bulk in the medial arch that, that lets yeah. my foot sit higher in the shoe, that then I can get this kind of length of, of life out of my shoe so I can keep using the laces to secure okay. the foot and it doesn't move around. So that basic sense, what the point I'm making there is mm. as a lab, you don't know anything about the bulk nature of the, yeah. shoe, of the foot mm. and how it fits into the shoe. Mm. Okay, yeah. You might have a low bulk foot and so you've got plenty of orthotic that you want to put in there to fill the space. Mm. Inversely, you might have a chunk of a foot mm. that's trying to be put into a, a leather shoe that's quite a slim, low fit. It's never going to naturally go. You haven't got much space to play with to put an orthotic in there that needs to control the rear foot and do everything that we want it to do clinically. We then have a problem of there's too much bulk. Well, it's a relationship between the shoe, the orthotic, the foot, how much bulk there is, what you want to do with it, what type of device. Okay, all of these different things is an incredible list. So I guess in, in essence, the, the main two that we get is the scan position, mm -hmm. okay, and the relationship of that scan to the prescription variables. Uh, in an anecdotal evidence sense, it's where the, the main two problems occurred. So I've scanned it, or sorry, I've captured it in whatever way. Mm -hmm. I put that to one side and go, cool. I'll get on with my day and I'll go and have lunch and, oh, I didn't do that prescription. Okay, I get back at the end of the afternoon and I quickly race out a prescription. Yeah. Kind of remember that patient. I kind of remember that scan. I kind of, but I, I, to do the three, think of the patient, mm -hmm. look at the cast and write the prescription is a challenging process if you're not particularly not experienced with it. But it, it's a sense of self-criticizing how I've, captured that cast and not assuming that it truly represents the foot that I'm going to put it into. I think and, it's important yeah. to mention there as well when, where we're looking at um, scanners, be it, you know, an iPad scanner, yeah. whether you've got expensive several thousand pound ones, yeah. it still need to reflect on that and critique it in the same way. Yeah, exactly you right. If you spent four thousand pounds on a scanner doesn't mean that scanner is going to do all that for you. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's a real challenge because you're right, you've spent some money on this, you expect it to cook your dinner. Uh, really <laughs> and, pay <the> bills. <laughs> and, and do everything <laughs> but in in whatever we're using to capture the foot we still need mm. to follow what we've been trained to do yeah. to position a foot in space okay yeah. we still need to do that which is where we're probably going to have another discussion on this one in yeah. time yeah. i really struggle with the current system of kind of wave and shoot where we're yeah. not interacting with the foot mm. okay I love the iPad scanners. They produce 2.8 million pixels of information. Mm. But if I'm doing it as a single practitioner, I can't control where the foot is. Right. Okay. And I can't expect the patient in a realistic sense, unless there's, you know, evidence, all the university pundits out there, if you want to do some research on this, go ahead. Yeah, um, but the, the relevance of trying to capture a foot without mm. manipulating the foot in the spot that I mm. wanted to represent that, for my casting and the way that the patient moves. So, yeah, ask me and I'll probably look down on <laughs> current casting techniques with regard to scanners. Long story short, the, the 10 key variables that I've found in an anecdotal sense that can have the biggest effect mm. on 
bulk of your devices mm. and that you know you know what we can do as practitioners and what we can look out for and help the labs to do because some of these things are lab based of course yes, yeah you now we've talked previously on the different types of errors that occur and just mm. in quick summary there's the thinking errors mm. which are a practitioner base it's it's us as a professional I think the rear foot should be at this point, and then I didn't think about where the forefoot is. That's yeah. a primary thinking error, that if that occurs, that'll cause bulk in the device. Mm -hmm. the, the interpretation errors, and this is one that's really tricky, and um, if, I, if I say I want my orthotics with the blue top cover, yeah. what's blue in my head and yeah. what's blue in your head, Heidi, will be completely different. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a subjective. I might need to go, I want a blue top cover with a hex code one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. Okay, that's descriptive, prescriptive information. Um, unfortunately, for a manufacturing sense, just make the arch a bit bulky. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's no variable. Mm. I, I always think about if mm. I'm going to make a Ferrari yeah. and I'm going to order a Stewie Ferrari because, you know, <laughs> I, they don't, I don't fit into them. And I never will. They're made by small Italians. In one with you. But whatever you are. So if I'm going to be lucky enough in the world to ever want to get a Ferrari, I'm probably going to... You don't uh, Ferrari, you gonna... Why would you make a Ferrari? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See? I haven't even thought about it. I probably have a Prius. Here, like, really. <laughs> yeah. So in that essence, if I'm going to achieve one of these desired cars that I, you know, I particularly want, so I can let my hair blow in the wind and do all that type of stuff. When it's raining. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I need to go to the manufacturer mm. of those cars and prescribe exactly what I want. Yeah. Now, on this point, if you think of, if I'm going to do that realistically, do you think they're going to start production without me signing off on this thing? No, of course they're not, are they? Okay. Not, that's the thing, not, isn't it? And you just, even going to go Kui. That's a no, no brainer. It's obvious, isn't it? And yet, when we're doing this with foot orthotics. Or, yeah, it's, oh, I kind of want this. Yeah, mm. you don't, I don't know, it's a so good that, mindset. That's right. Um, so, well, one of the key things that we're doing at the Footprint Hub is, is putting that in play. Mm. Okay. Um, as uncomfortable as it is, there is a step in this process that you'll need to look at the device, mm. check everything that you want, make sure that there's been no, oops, I made a silly mistake. Mm is this actually the device that I want that will fit into the mm. shoe that I'm thinking of? takes about 30 seconds to look at it and assess it and think those lines. And as soon as you okay that, we're not going to waste the time or the materials, importantly, mm. and the process of getting it to you in creating a device that's not suitable for purpose. Mm. And that, for us, is key for the environmental yes. impact that it has. Mm. So, um, yeah, all of that. Anyway, back to the thinking errors. We've you know gone through... The, the thinking and the, the um, interpretation errors. Uh, and then, of course, there's the, the just the process errors, which are completely lab-based, which is please put on a blue top cover and the person that goes to put on the top cover puts a red one on, mm -hmm. okay? They're completely preventable from systems and, again, something that the lab should and will own up to, mm -hmm. and that's when you get a, a repeat of device if it's functionally what you want it to mm -hmm. do, okay? Is it important to have a red device compared to a blue one? Most often not functionally, but might be what you ask for. So those three areas, the trickiest one is that interpretation one because it's commonly misunderstood mm. between many practitioners in the same room, okay, how we understand it. That's also so partially what, helped by developing a good relationship with your lab, isn't it? Exactly right. Yep, exactly right. And, and the way that we're trying to interact with it is we know that you can't always get access to the experts mm. at the time that you want access to them. Mm. Okay, so if we can create a system in modern communications where it's easily accessible, mm. it's out there, let's do it. So we're working on that and investing a lot of time and, and effort into it. Um, but I guess the, the wash down is what causes bulk scan position, number one, mm. okay, with scanning and casting. We can't expect labs to kind of change that scan position unless we ask them to do it. Mm. The relationship of that, okay, to the prescription, that's mm. the second one. Um, foot shape and morphology mm -hmm. that we talked about. Okay, it's, you know, where is a sulcus position? You know, there's a standardised sulcus mm -hmm. position, but I've met feet that have got really short metatarsal yeah. lengths and other feet that have got really long ones. And here in Norfolk, it's all different again. <laughs> <laughs> Web, that's got the web feet as well. Is that right? yeah. Swim across the canal. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, so all of those in relation to what we're trying mm. to create has a big effect. Okay, particularly in, in the medial and lateral arch, because you've got tissue expansions and the like that can occur from a non-weight bearing to a weight bearing foot. Um, the other one is, is, is that soft tissue displacement and joint movement. Yeah. Always think mm -hmm. about the foot that we're capturing in a non-weight bearing versus a weight bearing scenario, your choice on which you prefer. But of course, the movement that we're trying to change mm -hmm. will also affect the position of where that foot is in space mm -hmm. and the fit. If, it's too, if it feels too bulky or if it is too bulky, depends on the, you know, the joints and the, and the soft tissue. Mm. Uh, we went through thinking errors, that's number five. Interpretation errors is number six. Yeah. Um, okay, thinking errors, again, practitioner based, and it's higher than interpretation errors in the anecdotal evidence that we've got. Um, number seven is, is there doesn't seem, well, there, there's an absence of correlation between the foot and the shoe and the prescription okay they're, they're all three kind of sit in their own world and the prescription's fantastic but it doesn't relate doesn't to the scan or the shoe <laughs> that we're trying to do um another one of interest is, is unit of measurement um yes yeah yes i saw this is interesting actually go on mm. so the the way that i can describe it is um if i'm if I say uh, my, the, the medial arch is too high, I want to reduce it by two millimetres, mm. let's say. Okay, two millimetres isn't much, mm. might, be, might be a lot. Okay, it's that essence that's the problem. So two millimetres on a size UK six foot mm. is a big proportion of that foot. Mm. Okay, whereas two millimetres on a size 16 UK foot is nothing yeah. compared to the dimensions of that foot. So by the selection of millimetres as our unit of measure, mm. we've innately created a problem that we can't describe or relate what's going on mm. to the foot size. Whereas just simply if we use a percentage, mm. okay, this arch height is, is this, mm. okay, it might be 25 mil, might be 20 mil depending on the foot, okay, might be 35 mm. depending on the shape. But if I say, please reduce it by 10%, mm. we've automatically, in a simple step, created a scalar variable yeah. that will relate that arch profile to, the to there. Yeah. That's right. So, yes, we can measure things in a clinical sense and an academic sense of what, what mm. it represents, but we've also got to relate that back to what it means for a production and how production can do it, yeah. okay, and where the errors have come from. And more often than not, it's, it's you know, oh, please reduce it by 10 mil. Mm. Then the phone call happens a couple of weeks later. It's too, it's not supportive enough. Yeah. I need to put on a load more padding, mm. load more, okay? Mm. So um, that's one little variable that popped up. It didn't quite surprise me, but I was surprised that it made the 10. Um, and then the, the kind of, I guess, this one's a bit more subjective in nature. But we've got to think about whose responsibility was it to check the device for what area it was in. Okay, so in this sense, it, it goes back to uh, who who checked that it fit to the shoe. Okay, it wasn't the practitioner, or was it the the, the technician? And this kind of comes into the point of does this device, hugely bulky, does that look like it'll fit into a shoe? Mm. The subjective nature of that is well depends on what shoe. Yeah. Depends on what morphology the foot has. Mm. Depends on what is it, the purpose that you've got the shoe for. If it's a sprint shoe, mm. okay, I challenge that you could use EVAs in any sprint shoes. There's just not enough room. Mm. Uh, and that leads into the tenth point. And again, these will be written on the website and near this uh, podcast. Is what type of device is it? No, so, yeah, these ones. Um, Shank dependent. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig Payne described them many years mm -hmm. ago in, in this, and I like the idea. That, because that was it's... my turning point, actually, in my understanding of it when Craig Payne spoke. I don't yeah. know, was it 2008, 2009? And you know, you get that light bulb moment. Yeah, and good. I, and I don't think I prescribed many EVAs after that. No. Um, and it, do you know what? Okay. It made a huge difference to my bulk problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that's right. And, and again, you know, if you're finding it, you're getting bulk and it's always an EVA, yeah. you might be able to kind of work with the problem and whistle it down and make mm. EVAs your preferred device. Mm. Or it might just be that EVAs aren't right for the purpose for that you're, you're putting it yeah. to. 
exactly like in a in a in a sprint shoe. And I was, I'd also challenge how many people do you see walking around the shops uh, in a sprint shoe? <laughs> okay. Well, then so the youth, <laughs> that's right. The youth, the sprinter might come in and say, "I've got a problem. I've got a four foot you know problem that's hurting me, and I can't sprint." Mm. But if you're if you're too focused on yeah. the issue at the time, you're not adapting it to a person or a human being yeah. who walks around the shops yeah. 95% of the time mm. and sprints for, you know, 5% of the time. So in that case, it's engagement with the patient to say, look, these devices are for your daily use. Yeah. Don't put them in your sprint shoe. <laughs> if you want a sprint shoe, we're going to do a different device. Yes, you do have to tell your patients this, don't you? <laughs> That's like, right. You have to make, you know, mark them left and right as well. <laughs> and of course, like what... <laughs> I always say to the patients, you know, when you go and get your, your glasses, because, yeah. you know, glasses are prescribed and whatever mm. else, when do you take them off? Mm. Like, well, uh, I take them off to go to bed. I take them off to go for a swim. I take them off to go for a run. Oh, oh hang on a minute. Yeah, do you do that with your shoes? You put them on for everything and, and apply them to every situation. It's not realistic to get a customised one unless you mm. want to give up mm. certain, you know, yeah. treatment processes and paradigms. So... Um, again, going back to the the type of device, uh, just a quickly a shank dependent device is a, what you'd think of as a, an EVA. Yeah. It needs material underneath the device to provide the support. A shank independent one, okay, doesn't need any of that material. It relies on the, mm -hmm. the strength of the material. They're by themselves by their innate nature uh, less bulky underneath the arch, okay because they don't need that. Yeah. So that's a clinical decision that as, as a manufacturer, we don't make. It's like, what do you want? You tell us and we'll make it. But if you're having problems with bulk, where does the bulk come from? Is it Does it relate to the shoe and the foot? Yeah. Does it relate to the, the casting position that is um, the foot's being placed into manufacture? And who has control of that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think so. as well, I mean, you always think, oh, if I want, I've got elderly patients, maybe I'm not going to, I don't want these that's the hard devices, but there's so much choice now with materials and also how we manufacture, yeah. thinking at 3D printing, that you've Very got different stiffnesses, so you can get something that yeah. replicates the stiffness of a good EVA that's before right. you squashed it, but with yeah. longevity and less bulk, haven't you? And, and there's so that's much right. choice out there now. Oh, look, as, as a tech like me, once I've seen that 3D printing has got to where it is now and where it's going to go, it's like I'm a kid in a candy store. Um, there's so many things that are popping into my head that I can do from history. Okay, I can go and ring up those first patients that I, I met when I was straight out of uni and say, I've got them, here, I've got the best thing ever. Yeah. Right, because of the, the, the versatility that it brings to the clinical results that we're trying to do I don't have to work anywhere near as hard if I get the design right, yeah. okay, and, and get the cast into that design in the right way. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff. Hopefully that's given you all a bit of a rundown on the complexities of bulk. Um, I guess what what would you say, Heidi, is the, the essence of what can we as practitioners do that can have the biggest effect on our bulky or bulk of devices? I think we need to take more ownership and uh -huh. communicate more, I think. And yeah. as I say, I've been just as guilty as thinking, well, I'm the practitioner and the lab's got it wrong. But if I really look into my heart of hearts, I know actually mm. that come from me. Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, it's difficult when you've got a busy clinic and you've got and I, oh, yeah. I sat there laughing when you said, oh, you need the cast in front of you and you need the patient and you need to write the prescription. And don't do it at the end <laughs> of the day. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, I've never done that many times, not. Uh, that's right, and I've done. Um, we know. But then, so how much I, time do you waste when you've got your patient back, and then you get your device and it's bulky, and then you've got to get it back in again at your cost? Exactly and then the right. Device is remade with actually, if you've just given it an extra five minutes to do it there and yeah. then. Um, or what I used to do is is the variables that I needed to the tendered mm -hmm. to bulk. I did them. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I did them with the patient. I, I oh, checked my good. thinking and made quick mm -hmm. notes on the prescription form, wherever it was, my prescription forms are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, I use them to prompt my thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't follow the tick box. Yeah. Okay, it's like, well, what, what is it you're trying to get me to think of now? Okay, yep. And so what I used to try and do, and I had to learn how to do it, but was to, at the point in time, know yeah. that this is the type of device I'm going to go for. Yeah. And it might be a, it might have been a polypropylene device, and I knew that I always had heel width problems. Right. So what I used to do with the patient mm -hmm. in the room 
is measure the tissue expansion and measure the fit that I had into the shoe, okay. measure the internals of the shoe, because I knew that there would be problems there. And then when I got to fit the device when it came, I always had a bit of an idea of well, how much, if at all, I needed to take down on the on the heel. Ideally, none. Um, but it could, I could, I knew the zone that I was in because of that unique person's fat paddocks and tissue, soft tissue expansion. That's a good yeah. Mm. Well, funny I'm in there. The other thing is as well, I mean, after you've listened to this, do write either queries or experiences yes. that you've had or even ideas or tips to share. Put them in the comments box below because um, we'd love to hear them, yep. wouldn't we? Yeah. And look, this is a very organic yeah. kind of way of doing these things. Mm. These are open and free for mm. anyone to join if yeah. we've got capacity mm. for everyone to get on. Um, you won't normally be able to interact when we're having a chat, but you'll be able to type in an essential mm. way. But Again, what we do with that information, old statics, uh, statistics boy here, I put them in and I have a look and see what are the most common questions we yeah, get. Yeah. And let's get the information for that. Okay, do it in an effective way. Now, Heidi's got a phone call, so that means call. we can finish up. <laughs> oh, I'm note. sure she's calling herself. <laughs> see you next week, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.